just a couple of blocks from here at Maine and Monroe. Colonel Robert Brinkley was our founder, and he is an the finest hotel in the South I've ever seen, and name it the Brinkley House. He succeeded on that first point, of course, but just before the grand opening, his good friend Mr. George Peabody passed away. Mr. Peabody was not just a good friend of the owner. He was also a noted humanitarian and philanthropist, and it was in his honor that the name was changed at the last minute from the Brinkley House to the Peabody Hotel. Now, the Peabody has always stood as a symbol of Southern hospitality and elegance, and it was so made in Monroe until 1923. It had been decided that we needed to expand and relocate to here, 149 Union Avenue. So after two years and about $5 million in construction, on September 1st, 1925, the Peabody reopened its doors to the beautiful hotel we stand in today. The Peabody has also served as a social center here in Memphis. We have played host to countless weddings, proms, parties, and celebrations. Many of those, of course, hosted on the beautiful Peabody rooftop, where we have a gorgeous view of downtown Memphis and the Mississippi River, as well as the Royal Duck Palace, the lavish livings of our fine feathered friends. If you'd like to visit the rooftop or the Duck Palace, ladies and gentlemen, I'd welcome you to. After 6 o'clock, hop into the elevators and hit S for Skyway, then take a right out the double doors. On the way back down, or while we're waiting for the rooftop to reopen at 6, I encourage us to visit our memorabilia room. It's up here on the mezzanine, just above the gift shop, and there we have artifacts and stories unique to the Peabody's history. We have portraits of presidents and stars who have graced our halls. We have played host, in fact, to every president since Harry Truman here at the hotel. We have a piece of Elvis Presley's first RCA contract, which was negotiated, typed, and signed here in this very lobby. But of course, we have my favorite artifact, a memo written to our general manager regarding the menu over at Shea Philippe, explaining to him that we can have absolutely no duck served on any menu here at the hotel. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're of course here to see the mark of those Peabody Ducks. But if we haven't done so before, it may surprise us to learn that our whole tradition here got started with a bit of a practical joke. In 1933, our general manager, Mr. Frank Scott, and his friend Chip were out hunting in Arkansas. Now, they had with them, of course, some live duck decoys to help them hunt. They also happened to have them some Jack Daniels to help them keep warm. Now, the gentleman focused a bit more on the Jack Daniels. Never quite got around the country, and so we're surprised when they returned to the hotel in town that they had forgotten to leave their three English call ducks back at the farm. They improvised, snuck them into the hotel lobby, and let them loose into our fountain instead. Their deed done, the gentlemen retired to their rooms, but when they came down the next morning, they expected to hear stories of the staff having already chased the ducks around and gotten them, them out of the hotel, but what they found was that the ducks had actually stayed in the fountain the entire night long. They never hopped out, flapped about the lobby, or bottled off the seaside here in Memphis, and a crowd of guests had gathered around. They were gawking at the ducks. The general manager ran over and started apologizing, saying he would get this cleaned up right away, but the people there said no. They loved the ducks, and the gentleman said that we let them stay as our guests. So ladies and gentlemen, we have continued to honor that request, for we have had ducks as permanent residents here at the hotel for the past 80 years. Then in 1940, we had a gentleman join us, a bellman, Mr. Edward Pembroke. Mr. Pembroke was a retired animal trainer from Ramblin' Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. He told us that given the opportunity, he could train our five North American mallards to march across the rooftop, ride down the elevator, and then march down the red carpet into our lobby fountain every morning at 11 o'clock. There they would stay until 5 p.m. when he would usher them out of the fountain, march them back up the red carpet, up the elevators, and back to their rooms. And Mr. Pembroke proposed this to management. They were skeptical, of course, but they told him that if he could figure that out, they let him march ducks for as long as he'd like. Mr. Pembroke went on to march ducks with us here at the Peabody for the next 15 years. We also did the ducks all across the country. They were on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. They were featured in People Magazine. He and the ducks even made a very special guest appearance on Sesame Street for National Rubber Ducky Day. <laughs> Mr. Pepper did so much for the hotel, but especially for our ducks. And he was named the world's first duck master. My name is Anthony, I'm actually only the fifth duck master since 1940, and in just a few moments it'll be my honor to continue our tradition here for you. But first, on rare occasions, I have the honor and privilege
privilege of sharing the duties of Duckmaster. Today is one of those days, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my honorary Duckmaster, Miss Mary Lou Hasbro. Come on up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want us all to know what it means to be nominated as honorary Duckmaster here at the hotel. It's an official station. It has official duties and as such, it has an official proclamation. We're at the daily march of the world famous Peabody Ducks is a time honored tradition, begun in 1933 and attended by countless visitors. And whereas the care and protection of the Peabody Ducks must be attended to on a daily basis and can only fall to persons of high standards and great distinction, and whereas you are such a person, we resolve that on June 18, 2013, Miss Mary Lou Haswell has been chosen honorary Duck Master. Of course, in honor of the occasion, we had commissioned for her what no Duckmaster can do now. Their own Duckmaster King. <laughs> now, in just a few moments, we're going to use these symbols of all. We're going to have to step down and top, and we're going to march them back up the red carpet, up the elevators, and to their rooms. Now, we do ask that if we are here by the red carpet, then, and the entrance to the elevator, that we keep those areas clear. And please also resist the urge to reach out and pet the ducks. They are wild animals visiting with us after all. Please do our best to remain seated here in the lobby, but finally, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, please, take as many flash photos as you like. <laughs> you are all guests with us here tonight at the Peabody, and this march is for you. On behalf of the ladies and gentlemen, and ducks here at the hotel, we thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Experience you can